Okay, the next part of the lab, we are going to reconfigure our network uh, to implement this new uh, router. This is a 4321 in the simulator, but we have 4221s in the lab, so it should be essentially the same. We're going to imagine a scenario where this 2811 was connected out to some WAN link uh, with a serial interface, but now we're going to connect it to an Ethernet network, and we got this extra router we need to use. So we need to connect our existing 2811 to the, to the new router. Problem with that is we only have two Ethernet interfaces on this router, and we need to use one of them to connect to the router, to the other router. So what we're going to do is we're going to change our configuration on our LAN network in order to um, implement inter-VLAN routing, where we use one router interface uh, to route for multiple VLANs. That's sometimes called a router on a stick. So what we're going to do we're going to go through and we're going to take the IP addresses off of our uh, physical interface. I'm currently in the FA01, so I'll do no IP address to get rid of the IP address. And then I will go into FA00 and I'll do no IP address on that interface to uh, take the IP address off. And then I'm going to uh, disconnect the links to the switch. Um, and that cleans up pretty much what I need to clean up to get started with a new config. With a new config, we're going to use one router interface to route for multiple VLANs, so we're going to do that on FA00. Um, if we were starting from scratch and did not already have a config on this router, we would need to do no shutdown on the physical interface so that it would work. But then what we do is we create sub-interfaces, and we usually use the VLAN number for the sub-interface to try to make things uh, easier to keep in track, keep track of. So I'm going to create a sub-interface, FA0 slash 0.200. I'm going to use the encapsulation command. Dot one q tells it to do 802.1q encapsulation. That's our VLAN tagging that we do uh, on a lot of the uh, Cisco equipment. And then I'm going to put the VLAN number. So this is going to be for VLAN 200. And then I'm going to put my VLAN 200 gateway IP address on this router 224 alright so that was my uh, VLAN 200 sub interface so I need to create a VLAN 201 sub interface right put an IP address on it 33 is the IP address for that subnet Oh no, I got an error. What happened? I'm so confused. What happened was I forgot to do the encapsulation command. You have to do the encapsulation command before you can create the sub-interface. So I did that on purpose so that you guys would see that because most of the time there's somebody that does that in the lab and it messes their stuff up. So that's the uh, config on the router. If we look at my interface, it says I have uh, the interfaces dot one and dot thirty three on the sub interfaces. We're going to connect our router to a different switch port. We'll go twenty four for fun. So now I need to go configure port twenty four zero uh, twenty four to be a trunk. Right, the trunk makes it um, makes it tag the traffic so that the router can read those tags and, and know which VLAN the traffic belongs in. If I do show int trunk, that should show me my trunk is up. So that tells me the trunk is up and working. So now my ping should work between the devices again. Last time the first one fails, so hopefully it'll work. And it's not working, which is very frustrating. So let's figure out why. First thing we'll do is make sure we can ping our gateway interface. So on this subnet, the gateway is dot thirty-three. And it doesn't look like I can ping the gateway interface, so that tells me I have something possibly wrong on the router. 
10.243.133.33, up and up, VLAN 201. Fastened is 00, zero. It's the interface I used, right? FA00. Zero, zero. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, yeah. All right, so I'm glad the simulator actually broke that because that's good, good thing for us to learn. What just happened there was that um, my PC still had the MAC address for the FA001 interface cached in its ARP cache, uh, but I physically reconfigured my uh, device so that now my my uh, Gateway IP has a different MAC address because now it's a sub-interface on FA00, so that gives it a different MAC address. So once I cleared the ARP cache, I, uh, I got it back with the different MAC address. You see up here it had the MAC address of blah, 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 dot two, and now it has blah, 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 dot 101. So um, this is, is very likely this will happen to you in the lab. So uh, if you if you configure yourself quickly enough that the ARP cache doesn't time out, uh, then you will need to um, clear your ARP cache potentially. So now I can ping between my two PCs. Yay! I wish I would have figured that out a little quicker so there wasn't so much dead air with me working on that. So um, the next step is we are going to uh, configure the network between our two routers uh, on this subnet. So the subnet is .48, so one of them needs to be .49, and one of them needs to be .50. So this is going to be FA01 I'm configuring now. I'm going to give, the, I'm going to give this one .49, I guess. Habit. 49, and it's going to be a 30-bit 30, 30 mask. 252. Uh, remember, I've already done no shutdown, so I don't need to do that again. And now we're going to go over to the router and the 4221, 4321 in the simulator and configure one of our interfaces. We'll use, uh, we will use zero, zero. No, zero, 001, zero, zero, 001 to connect to the other router. So I'll configure that one first. Uh, give it an IP address uh, 10.243, 133.50. Do no shutdown. And then we will connect the uh, routers together. Router to router, we need to go crossover. We have some extra switches, so if you want, if you wanted to use a switch to connect the two routers, you can do that as well. Uh, so now the two routers are connected. So in theory, we should um, be able to ping between the routers. All right, so I was able to ping between the routers, success rate 100%. So now my network is good and up to the router with basic IP, between the routers with basic IP connectivity. Now we're gonna connect to um, this switch uh, and give it an IP address on the gig, give the 4221, 4321 in the simulator. We're gonna give it an IP on the gig zero, zero, zero interface. And we're going to use the IP address from the table, which if you remember, that was mine. IP address 
192.168.243.133. All right, so that's the basic IP connectivity. We'll connect our router uh, to the switch. Any of the ports 1 through 12 in the room network should be good for the subnet. Oh, hey, I didn't do no shutdown. So if you look at your link lights and they don't come on, that means you didn't do no shutdown. So, so that is that is uh, connected now. That switch port is not configured for port for port fast, so it's not going to work just yet. So let's uh, make sure we configured everything we needed to configure at this point. And I do believe that we have configured uh, the basic IP connectivity that we wanted to get configured at this point. I do want to ping. Uh, 192.168.243.1 I do want to ping the gateway from this router I'm going to ping 192.168.243.1 because I think that's what the gateway is set in the simulator but I might give you a different gateway to use in the lab uh, so use whatever I tell you to use for the uh, gateway And that didn't work. So there's a slight chance that I might have had the uh, gateway set to 254. It didn't look like that's working. So there's a very uh, good chance I have something broken on my uh, side in the simulator, which I'll check that uh, and get back to you. But that's the basic IP uh, configuration required uh, for this subnet, for this lab, for this network, for this lab.